In this video, we'll look at an alternative definition of the dot product, and that is one based on the magnitude of the two vectors involved. So here are the a vector and the b vector. Notice the vertical bar lines indicating magnitude. And then we have this extra ingredient at the end, which is the cosine where that theta value, that angle, is the angle between the two vectors. If you take a look at, down here at the pictures, you can see that we would define theta as this angle here. If the vectors were at right angles, that would be our theta there, pi over two radians. Or in this case here, the obtuse angle, we would get an angle like the one shown. Notice there is another possible way to define the angle going the long way around, but we always choose theta to be the smaller angle between the two vectors. It's important to note that this form of the dot product gives exactly the same value as the component version seen earlier. The difference is we can add some interpretation here because we have information about the relationship between the vectors. Let's explore how that applies here. If our angle is between zero and pi over two radians, then if we think of the cosine graph, let's do a quick sketch of the cosine graph, out to pi, pi over two, the cosine graph starts at one and then goes down through zero and then goes to negative one here. So this is our angle in the graph of cos theta. Then what we see is between zero and pi over two in the inputs, we're going to get a positive value for our cosine. Well, if that's the case, then we're going to get a dot product that's positive because the magnitudes of any vectors are always going to be positive as well. So really what we're going to be focusing on if we're looking at the sine of a dot product is the cosine of the angle. A special case of that is when we have vectors that are perpendicular to each other or orthogonal. If we take a look at pi over two and take the cosine of that, well, we have theta equals pi over two, cos of theta, is going to equal exactly zero. So that is going to give us a special relationship or a special value for dot products when the angle between the two vectors is exactly 90 degrees or pi over two radians. Finally, when we have an angle that's larger than pi over two, but up to pi, it'll never get beyond that because we can always take a smaller angle. That's going to give us a cosine of the angle that is negative. So, if we have the vectors pointing in some sense in opposite directions, not necessarily completely opposite, but not in an acute relationship with each other, then we're going to get a dot product that is negative because of that cosine term. So what's another way to interpret this? Well, the dot product can be thought of as capturing sort of like the amount to which the two vectors point in the same direction. The two vectors point in the same direction. What we see here is that the smaller the angle is, the larger cosine of theta would be. Again, quick sketch of cosine. It has a maximum when its input angle is zero, but for small angles, it's still large. And if we take into account the length of the two vectors, we're gonna maximize that product with the smallest possible angle. Then as the angle hits pi over two, we end up with a zero. And in that sense, the A and B vectors, when they're perpendicular, point not at all in the same directions. They point in perpendicular directions. And then we get negative values when we have obtuse angles. So there is some element of the dot product representing how aligned the two vectors are, and also taking into account the vector's lengths as well. By combining the two forms of our dot product, we can calculate things like the angle between two vectors. And especially in 3D, that can be a challenging thing to do in any other way. So what we know is that we can take the dot product with component form, And the component form of the dot product here is two times five plus two times negative three 
plus negative one times two. And we calculate that out as 10 minus six minus two or two. Now that two value doesn't give us anything immediately, but that is also going to equal from the angle form, it's going to equal the length of A times the length of B times the cos of the angle between them, and that is now the only unknown left. We can figure out the length of A. We'll do that on the side here. The length of A is the square root of each component squared, so 2 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 1 squared, or 4 plus 4 plus 1 is 9, square root of 9, which is 3. And on the other side, the length of B is the square root of 5 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 2 squared. That's 25 plus 9 plus 4, all square rooted, which gives us the square root of 38. Putting those all together, the length of A is 3, the length of B is the square root of 38 times the cos of theta, and we're going to set that equal to the dot product we calculated earlier. All of that equals 2. And now what we can do is solve for theta. So we'll have cos of theta is 2 over 3 square root of 38, and if we grab our calculator, that gives us cos of theta is approximately 0 0.108. And if we do the angle inversion of that, the inverse cosine, we get an angle of approximately 1.462 radians, which is pretty close to pi over two in fact. So these two vectors are close to nine degrees to each other. If we do convert that to degrees, it is 83.8 degrees.